and welcome to my podcast on real relationships. My name is Sophie Passon and I am a relationship expert, international speaker and best-selling author of the book Your Other Half. I decided to start this podcast because in my opinion relationships are currently not being portrayed as what they really are. Whether you're watching the news, social media or on TV, the perception given to people is wrong and my aim is to talk about what happens in the real world, talk about real stories and listen to what real people think, do or go through as opposed to creating expectations of something that doesn't actually exist. I may not agree with everything that is said by my guests, but it is their chance to express their opinions and their stories. And here today, we are going to talk about the importance of intimacy in a relationship with Priya Torkow. Hi, Priya. Hello, Sophie. How are you? How are you? <laughs> are we both, you? both at the same time. Yes, yeah, exactly. Good. Yeah. So, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? Okay, well... Um, I've got the urge to start with I'm not young, which is an interesting thing to say. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not very old either, but I'm somewhere in the middle. And I've been a psychotherapist for about 30 years, which is a long time. And when I first began, I was very struck by how most of my clients were talking about relationships, even if they were coming to me because they had depression or anxiety. It didn't seem to matter what they were talking about. Um, it was either that they were in a difficult relationship or they weren't managing relationships or they couldn't have any or too many, etc. Mm -hmm. And so I got very, very interested in relationships um, quite early on in my career. And I would say really that's been my passion about two years after I qualified. Uh -huh. So for the next 20, 28 years, relationships. And I have built on my knowledge by doing all sorts of training and researching mm -hmm. um, about relationships. And the subject you've chosen today, intimacy, is a very, very important one. And often your average therapist may not even mention the word, let alone sex. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like it's my job to, to do so. ask couples, mm -hmm. how is intimacy in your relationship? Because it's so very central. And this is the thing. It is essential. And when people first meet, there's often a lot of sex contributing to the bond, incidentally. Um, but as time goes on, for most people, the amount of intimacy and sex we reduce. So yes. tell us a bit more about that. Well, first of all, that doesn't surprise me in the least because I'm sure you know this, and I suppose everybody knows it really, that... Well, there's this saying, isn't there? Any fool can fall in love. Mm -hmm. You know, we start off in love. Everything's beautiful. It's very physical, sensual. You know, people use phrases like, you know, we couldn't, couldn't stop touching each other. We were at it like rabbits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, the thing is that I, th I think it's around the two-year mark, sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more. What happens is that all those hormones and all those enzymes and whatever going around gradually start to lessen and then you're into the real business of relating. And that's when people really look at each other. Who is this person I'm with? And, oh my God, I'm not sure if I really fancy them. And do I want to have sex five times a week? And, you know, and things start moving into, yeah they change and so it's not unnatural and i don't think you know just as a thing it's anything to worry about it's what you do with that mm -hmm. and how you feel about that that's the important thing how you relate to the fact that the intimacy seems to be lessening and i think obviously you know when a relationship actually start to break down the first couple of things that we go are intimacy and communication yeah i think that's true and i think it might be useful at this point just to say what intimacy is mm -hmm. because a lot of people will think oh you're talking about you're just talking about sex obviously sex is a huge part of intimacy but intimacy i see it as this kind of you know 
sort of sphere. And, you know, you could be standing at a bus stop and have an intimate conversation with somebody mm-hmm. and you could really sort of touch each other in some way emotionally. Um, and you could be sleeping with somebody that you've lived with for a long time at the top end kind of thing, but not be very intimate with them. Mm. Because it's about connection, it's about a feeling of specialness with that person, it's emotional as well as physical, sometimes even spiritual. Mm -hmm. It is a huge thing. Um, Intimacy, yes, and as you say, you know, what goes first is often the intimacy and the sex because they're very closely linked Mm -hmm. and everything starts to get a bit turned upside down and the closeness, it's like it's been challenged. Mm. And people get quite scared sometimes, don't they? Because, oh my God, you know, we've only been together two years, what's happening, you know, and actually I'm pregnant and, oh, you know, and... um, quite scary and I love it actually when couples come to me early on and they say yeah this is it because there's always a point where it's too far gone down the garden path so just yeah Yeah. um but I think the other problem that I see with clients a lot is that they're scared to have a conversation with each other you mean yeah oh yeah they're fine talking to their mates and the family or whoever about it but not to each other yes I think that depends Couples are very different. Some couples are quite good Mm -hmm. at having channels of communication that they feel comfortable with. And they do good things like they listen to each other and they give each other the space and they're not always going, oh, well, what do we do about that then? But they just stay with the feelings. Mm -hmm. And other couples have got absolutely no idea how to do that. And those are the ones that struggle the most. Um, So, yes, I mean... Being able to say, oh, can we sit down and talk about this? I'm really sad. We don't seem to be making love anymore. Can we talk about it together? Wouldn't that be a gift? You know, just Mm. that. It sounds simple, doesn't it? But it's very difficult for some people. And I think, obviously, you know, the the routine gets in the way. And and if we talk about just intimacy, you know, in general, just like sometimes the hugging, cuddling, uh, you know, that kind of goes. I mean, I, I... remember when i was first in england uh where people you know on the phone were always saying oh i love you love you too and it it, it seems so rushed and like it wasn't meant and i think that it becomes a habit and there's no meaning there's no nothing behind it anymore i love that you said that Mm. because um i've actually said to my husband don't well sounds harsh don't i don't say don't but i'd rather you didn't say love you all the time <laughs> I, i'd but love it feeling. yeah i'd rather i'd rather get your expressions of love i'd love mm-hmm. to receive them things you do things you think about for us and so on um and he's getting it he still struggles with it because it's a bit of a habit but um what was the other thing you said um uh, oh. Touch, hugging, cuddling. Oh, yes. Um, my Where I always start with couples is what happens when you leave each other and you meet? Mm-hmm. You know, when you go out the door to work or... Uh, and sometimes they don't even... They don't even look at one another as they part, let alone mm-hmm. hug, let alone kiss. And to me, that's so sad, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I'm a bit of an idealist, but I would love to think, oh, there's my love. Hello. You know, oh, let me. And get this all excited feeling about it. Yeah. And so in your opinion, what should people do if they notice that maybe they're not quite as close as they used to be? Well, the very first thing I think they need to do is say, you know, you know, I'm feeling sad that we don't seem to be as close. One of them has to start mm-hmm. and say, can, can we talk about it? As I said earlier, um, it's not necessarily a crisis, you know, but the big thing is acknowledging. So, and ideally not going into blame. Why don't you this? Why don't you that? I'm always doing that, but you're not. That is... Doesn't stuff it doesn't anything, does it? Well, it pushes them further apart, doesn't it? I'm sure we all know that. And it's hard sometimes not to do that. Yeah, we're all Uh, human. 
Yeah, especially around sex. There's this thing. I hate, what's it? there's a word I hate. It's the word initiate, initiating. Um, you know, I'm always initiating. She never initiates. He never initiates. What I say to couples is just start with a cuddle, you know. Sit on the sofa, put your arms around each other and have a cuddle and just breathe together. And forget about sex for the minute. Just get gentle and close and talk about how that feels. And, you know, maybe crying comes up. Or So if you kind of enter, if, if they kind of enter into a space where they're honest about the feelings about it and start to just kind of get a bit closer and talk and hug and something will happen from that won't it if they haven't been doing that obviously that's already a different input and i think one of the things i often see as well is um you you one or other we start hugging cuddling whatever but then there's that sense of expectation and the other person is like oh here we go i know what they want yeah that's so sad isn't it mm. i find that so sad because huh, well coming back to this word intimacy um it's like ideally if the couples can talk about what they mean by that and acknowledge that sex is the icing on the cake if you like yeah. you know that's the lovely can be the lovely bit but amazingly sometimes it's not always the most intimate bit so if they can so say up to it isn't it yeah so if um the one who feels like oh god you know as soon as we start kissing his hands are going to go there you know if she can say to him you know what i love is the kissing and could we just take it slowly and I have this little theory, um, I've got a little video on it. Um, I love this thought that sex itself is an entity, you know, it's out there somewhere and it has feelings and it can only come in to this space with that relationship when it feels safe. <laughs> in other words, when they're close and connected and loving, Otherwise, it's going to, it's a very sensitive thing, sex, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I just find that a very helpful perspective. It reminds me of the sun, you know. It, yeah. it, it will come in and couples can receive it and embrace it and each other when there is intimacy and connection and safety. And it, I think if they can learn to talk about those things with each other, I feel unsafe when that happens, or I feel safer. I really love it when you do that. that, mm -hmm. that. Okay. And I'd love, I'd love to have the safety of not knowing that, of knowing that your hand isn't going to go straight to my breast mm -hmm. if we have a kiss. You know, and it takes courage to say things like that, doesn't it? I think the other thing as well is sometimes people think, oh, there's no point having that conversation because they say this that or the other they, they're kind of running the conversation but on the head before it's actually happened not giving them a chance to actually respond yeah but you know my guess is that sort of thing happens when the things are talked about in a certain way mm -hmm. perhaps harshly blaming instead of saying i'm feeling this it's you you well then of course the other person is going to shut down so that's where that idea, there's no point in talking about it because, you know, they're not going to listen or they're going to go away or blah. Well, of course they are if you're not saying gently, you know, I'm feeling really sad or I felt quite unsafe when that happened. You know, it's, it's actually a learning how to communicate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's real learning. Um, it's worth learning the skills, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. But I think also, for some people, the lack of intimacy actually reflects a lack of feelings. So if they're not intimate, they feel unloved. Right. You're saying that people might, yes, they would equate not yeah. much intimacy mm -hmm. with feeling not love. Not everyone, but some no. do. Well, I think actually there's a lot of truth in that because if you take the broad band of intimacy, the broad spectrum, 
then it is about expressions of love and connection and giving your partner time and saying things like what would you like to do right now or you know buying them a bunch of flowers um it is intimacy has a lot to do with expressions of love mm. but also there needs to be space to think well i wonder what is happening for them i wonder why we're not so intimate i wonder what's going on for them you know rather than oh god they don't love me and I think yeah. let's not forget as well that perception is projection. So sometimes what you perceive is what you project of yourself. So you may be perceiving there's an issue, but there may not be. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where saying I'm feeling this way, you know, I wonder what's going on for you. In other words, explore and mm. find mm. out, isn't it? And not take, yeah. Sometimes also saying, you know, actually, I feel quite rejected by this. Mm. I think so. I feel I feel rejected, and I think it's important if that's your truth for the partner mm -hmm. to to hear that, because they may have no idea. So maybe I'm sure you've had this with couples. You know, one partner says something like that, the other one goes, "Oh, you never told me that." <laughs> you know? And then they can start saying more. Well, yeah, I do. I feel rejected. I feel I feel really hurt. And then, wow gosh i'm amazed that i've created that you know and you feel that way it's that thing of really wanting to know what's going on for one another and i think also i think sometimes we say things but the people on they're just not listening properly so they're not hearing it they're hearing what they want to hear or what they what? don't want to hear they block off and I, I do see that quite a bit yeah or they're they're hearing with half an ear because they're trying to get their bit in as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. That's another thing. Well, you can't get more of a vital skill than listening when it comes to communication, can you? I mean, it is so basic. And people don't realise what it is, actually. Um, it isn't just, right, okay, you said that, now it's my turn. Um, I mean, there is nothing more wonderful than you saying to somebody oh i can really see you're upset you know i can really see that and yeah you're really upset that's listening mm. you know letting them know that you're hearing you're really getting what they're saying that's listening plus you know, and that is and i think the other problem is sometimes people are very much about getting their point across yeah. as opposed to caring not caring about the other person is the wrong term but you know what i mean they, they, they're so oh, i want to say this i want to say this but the other person's thinking exactly the same way so you've got to actually listen to the person first if you want them to listen to you otherwise they mm -hmm. yes getting rejected and not listen to you well i have this very very simple little structure uh, that work that works it's like the most basic thing for couples who really don't listen to each other i just call it five minutes five minutes and i say look this is just to help you get started. You know, you sit down together, you, you, you time five minutes, one of you talks to five about whatever you would like to talk about for five minutes. And when you finish, the other one says, thank you, thank you for sharing that with me. And then you switch over. And it's as simple as can be and as basic as can be. And you'd be amazed well, a lot of couples just can't do it. <laughs> and a lot of couples find it really, really helpful. And then they say, oh, let's have another five minutes, five minutes. Yeah. And yeah. it's the it's the art of listening that's it's just beautiful actually when it happens. And then of course, sometimes um someone will have a higher libido than their partner. Libido is a whole thing, yes, yes. I I think libido is a difficult concept because the idea, I find it interesting because it's talking about an individual, that person's got a high libido, that person's got a low libido. If you're in a relationship, it's again it's perception, about, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry? It's perception again, isn't it? What is a high one, what's not? <laughs> yes. And if you're in a relationship with somebody, it's about what your libido is together and what you create together. And there are no rules or rights or wrongs. And obviously, you know, being sexual with another person is something that you do 
look after and nurture and make time for it and you know give it importance and caring and if if one person likes sex you know it could be that one person likes sex every day and one person likes it once a week well then maybe you find a compromise or and again communicate mm -hmm. and do you think that you can actually have a relationship with that intimacy are you asking me can you have a relationship without sex or are you asking me can you have a relationship without intimacy because i think they're different mm -hmm. go on well i think is there a rule well first of all i wonder is there a rule about what relationships should be like you know i suppose we have a bit of an idea that if you're in a committed relationship if you're married or partners it would include intimacy mm -hmm. and that would include sex yes that would be the ideal wouldn't it but it's not always the case mm -hmm. and i think because intimacy is so wide and can be so deep that maybe they're very sensual together mm -hmm. or maybe they just both for various reasons don't actually want full-on sex and if there's love and caring and closeness that may be okay if it let's face it if it's okay for both people whatever gender whatever they are if it's okay for them both then it's okay right <laughs> no, completely, completely. Mm. and when it's not okay when would you say it becomes a real problem i.e the relationship is in trouble yeah when would i when, think that? yeah when there's unhappiness mm -hmm. when there's unhappiness when well if if somebody feels maybe that there's an element of um I mean, abuse is a strong word, but, you know, feeling not heard, not, they're unhappy. Um, the, it can be that it can be so many things, but probably most issues would sort of be about intimacy, you know, in whether it's the communication aspect or the sexual aspect. So uh, I think, I think the simplest and most real way to answer that is if if there's unhappiness. Okay. It's not kind. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I would agree. And mm. one of the other things I wanted to talk about, because it's very much a topic of a moment, is the menopause. Because mm. obviously um, it's a time where the hormones in a woman are all over the place. Although I kind of um, personally believe that men go through something similar um how because well, it's not even how um, a, a lot of people say that it does affect their relationship i think it's a huge thing it's a massive change in a woman isn't it mm -hmm. um and if you think about it in terms of sex it is a time when a woman's body is changing um like if she's in her early 50s mid 50s she's not she's not as excited about sex necessarily um and while her body's going through that letting go of the um the possibility of having children i mean that's that's all part of it it's a physical a very physical emotional thing and um i think the most important thing is again is to express what's going on for the partner to be empathic and caring and to find i mean during menopause you know the main theme sort of thing in the middle of it because obviously there's pre and there's post but in the middle of it when you know she may not even want to be held or touched to to just be as loving as possible and find out what she does want and be patient and the great thing is many women come out of menopause actually feeling quite sexual maybe in a different kind of way that's the silver lining and i agree with what you said about men i think it's not called cause sorry it's not called that menopause but i think men often have what's more commonly called a midlife crisis i mean i think we it's do normal, that. isn't it it's hormones the hormones come in as a teenager raging that's for both sexes 
yeah. and in essence the venipose they come out so it's got to be for both isn't it yes and you know if you're with, with somebody for many many years you're going to go through many life stages together aren't you and you're bound to you know sort of have some difficulties sometimes but ideally the loving listening the caring the support i think one of the wonderful sentences is how can i support you mm -hmm. is there something i can support you with right now what would you like what do you need and it's not always easy because if something is so dramatically difficult then obviously whatever it is then it's not easy but that's when perhaps help is needed a third person even not necessarily a therapist it's great if you can go to a therapist and hopefully they're good but even somebody in the family who is is happy to you know hold the space and be supportive and i think that's very important sometimes it's good to have a third entity <laughs> and obviously we've spoken um just now about you know when you've been together for a long time and you've gone through all the life stages but one of the things i also see is people uh who have been married and then divorced and they're now late 40s in the 50s and actually intimacy scares them a little bit i mean in fact the entire dating thing scares them but there's also that kind of fear around intimacy you mean if they're on their own? Yeah, they're on their own. They want a new relationship, but it's all oh, yeah. weird. And yes, I I really agree with that. Um, that it can be quite scary, especially the speed of it these days, the internet dating and all that. I think the most important thing for them to do is be true to themselves. You know, they need to go at a pace that they're comfortable with to not say yes to anything that, that they don't feel is right to say yes for their body, for their heart, for their soul, and um, trust themselves and, and their own intuition. And um, I think there are enough people out there of a certain age who will understand that and yeah. have a resonance with that because uh, not everybody who's dating is young and virile and all the rest of it so i think it's really trusting that your body and your heart knows what it wants at some level yeah yeah no, no i agree um listen we're actually getting to the end of our time already so as a last question i know i know as a last question what i'd like to ask you is what your best advice would be for people currently struggling with intimacy issues and thinking right i've just listened to this there is a problem where do you go next? <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little phrase, a short sentence. Communication is the best lubrication. I quite like that, actually. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So I come back to what I said before. If it's really hard, get help. Go to a, a, a therapist who works with couples who's experienced and talk about it be honest be real and patient and gentle with each other um and talk 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 and listen 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 i think that those are the key things and and if you do that well and you value your relationship and you nurture it with the input that you give it then intimacy often flows from that you know a relationship isn't it, it isn't just something that goes all by itself. Mm -hmm. It needs to be loved and nurtured by the couple in it. It's their responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, yeah completely, completely. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it was lovely talking to you. And for everybody else, if you enjoyed the show, then please subscribe, leave us a review, and more importantly, come back for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you.